discussing, we've discussed a couple of products. Today we are looking at rice and a couple of other products, actually. Remember the objective of this session. If you are joining us from outside Nigeria, we are basically looking at products that can be exported to other African countries under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Someone is saying, how do we join the body? Go to the website. The website, um, the website is www.ntnem.org. Just you pick up the form and pay online. The details are on the website. I've dropped the link for you. Um, www.mnem.com. That's the network of practicing non oil exports at the BOT. I've just inaugurated and they've started working in NS. I'm part of it also. So uh, we we'll are work, working together with other Nigerians to make it happen. All right. We are looking at rice. Look at rice exported from Africa. One oil and $68 million. But who are those importing? Importer of rice, $6.4 billion. Now, you know, is it not interesting that Benin Republic with less than 30 million people, less than 20 million people, is importing rice more than Nigeria? More than Nigeria. Is it not interesting? Because majority of Benin rice import come to Nigeria. If you don't know, that's one of the reasons why Nigerian border was closed. That's one of the reasons why Nigerian border was closed. Bene is the largest importer of rice in Africa, and Bene population is not up to Lagos. <laughs> it's not up to Lagos. So obviously, most of those rice escape through the bush path and find themselves in Nigeria. So sorry for the break in transmission. I have an issue with my network. But we are back now. Sorry for the break in transmission. All right. So like I was saying, um, talking about the... Um, I was talking about rice. The fact that um, who are the major importer of rice? In Africa, let's go to Côte d'Ivoire, South Africa, Ghana. Senegal, Kenya, Togo, Guinea, Angola are the major importer of rice. And the import of rice is $6.4 billion. 10%, about 15% of this would be about um, almost a billion dollars, actually. Almost a billion, because half of this would be about 600 plus, and uh, a quarter is about. Um, so about a billion dollar is 16%, and that is what Ben is importing. Like I said, majority is coming into Nigeria. Now, if you look at the export of rice, who are the people we have to compete with? Who are the people that Nigeria we have to compete with if you want to do rice? Or other people joining from other parts of Africa? Who are the people that we will have to compete with in order to be able to export rice? They are Senegal. Tanzania, Uganda, Mauritius, South Africa, Mozambique, and Togo. These are the major exporters in Africa that we will have to uh, deal with if we are going to be able to export this product out of Africa. So remember the competitors, Senegal, Tanzania, Uganda, Mauritius, and South Africa. For now, Nigeria is not yet self-sufficient with rice, so the chance of export is very slim. Very, very slim. But for other countries in Africa, then we have, we have an idea of what the market looks like. Corn. It's interesting that Nigeria does not allow corn export, but corn import into Africa is 3.48 billion. Corn import into Africa is 3.48 billion. There is a major market in Egypt. Egypt is importing half, 50% of the 
of corn import goes to Egypt. 50% of corn import in Africa go to Egypt. 50% of corn import in Africa go to Egypt. So any country in Africa that is looking for market for corn, you look at Egypt, and I noticed something, the North African country, Algeria, Morocco, Egypt, all North African country are the major, major, major importer of corn in Africa. Even Tunisia, Libya, Kenya, is that not interesting? <laughs> there is need for so if you are interested in corn you need to do the research why is it that north africa are the major importer more than almost 80 percent is 65 75 almost 90 percent about 90 percent of import is done by north africa you know, the beauty of data is it makes it easier. This now, for me, call for research. This, for me, call for research. For anybody that is looking at corn, you need to ask yourself, what exactly is making the North African countries being the major importer of corn? If you look at rice, you will notice a lot of importer of rice are in West Africa. A lot of importer of rice are in West Africa. But a lot of importer of corn are in North Africa. So if you're able to do that research, you'll probably be able to find, discover I mean, no other findings regarding why they are importing. Maybe you can even add a level of value that will make it even more attractive because they probably have to process some level when it gets there. What exactly do they use it for? Who are the people using it? Why is the interest so high in North Africa? 3.48 billion. You know, do you know that corn, <laughs> corn import in the world is more than cocoa import. Corn import, corn trade, the trade dead value of corn is more than cocoa. And Nigeria does not allow corn export because we probably are not producing enough, but there's a huge market for it, much more than cocoa and most of the commodities that Nigeria focus on and even other country focus on. Who are the exporters? South Africa. We are exporting about $584 million. South Africa is doing 64%. Interesting. Uganda is doing 15.9%. 15, 15 Zambia is doing 9.61%. Amazing. Look at the look at the gap between the pro, our export and import. So you can see that our production is nowhere near what the world is doing. It's nowhere near, and you can see the trend line keep growing. And remember what I told you about trend line last week: the fact that trend line will keep growing for food related products in Africa because we are only consumers. We have a very very high consuming population. Our population is going exponentially. And many of African families basically live to survive. More than 50% of an average household in Africa, I mean, an average household in Africa spend more than 50% on food for survival. And the population keep increasing because there are unemployment, so people sleep early, no light. And all this contributes to the increase in population in Africa. Who are the competitors? Comp if you want to export corn, the market again is Egypt, Algeria, Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, and a number of others. But who are the competing competitors? South Africa, Uganda, Zambia, Tanzania, and Ethiopia, and Ethiopia. The next one is insulated wires. Insulated wire. I'm glad to see that we export more insulated wire than we import. I'm aware that our Nigerian insulated wire is a lot better than 
imported ones. People still want to buy insulated wire imported ones. Look at the look at the major importers. Morocco. Morocco is a major exporter and it's also a major importer. I mean, this is very common for a lot of uh, economy. The same item they import, they also export. Sometimes some people in that country prefer other brands. They probably don't appreciate. Can you imagine? They probably don't appreciate the locally manufactured ones. Even though a good example of this will be Innocent in Nigeria. There are West African countries government, government of West African country placing order for Innocent Moto. Placing order for Innocent vehicles. But Nigerian National Assembly and a number, even the state government of that state are not accepting it. They are rejecting it. Is it not, is it not amazing? <laughs> they are rejecting it. They are not accepting it, even though it's produced here. So I'm not surprised. So when you see that, it's just basically telling you in that country, some are importing and some are exporting. That's basically what it's telling you. In that country, some are doing the import and some are doing the export. That's basically what you see when you see a country import. So the fact that they import means some prefer the imported brand and the country is not prohibiting it and some prefer the exported brand, I mean the locally produced brand. So, who are the major importers? Morocco. I know, uh, I know Newil, uh, Coleman's Wire and Cable, and a number of others in Nigeria producing wires. Now, let me tell you something, those are listening to me. Whenever we look at this product, please always remember you are not supposed to be manufacturing this product. Your goal should be out of this product. Which of them can I form an alliance with the manufacturer and distribute it in Morocco and distribute it in Egypt and distribute it in Tunisia and distribute it in South Africa and distribute it in Algeria? Which of them? For example, I regularly do shipment to Europe of different African products. And guess what? I am not a manufacturer. I am just a distributor. I am not a manufacturer. I am just a distributor. So that means as we think about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, I think we need more, more merchants who will help manufacturers distribute their product more than we need manufacturers. If we have a lot of merchants demanding for those products, the manufacturer can expand, can scale, and then you keep buying. They can produce for you in your brand or you sell their brand. So as you think, for those of us that have been coming every week and we've been learning together, discussing AFCFTA, please always remember your objective should not be to be producers because one of the things we must focus on in Africa under AFCFTA is the fact that we must add value to what we are exporting. You know what? Export have the chance through export, we stand the chance of being able to meet three of the sustainable development goals. We stand the chance of meeting three of the sustainable development goals. We stand the chance. We stand the chance. Go one, no poverty. Go two, no hunger. Go ten, reducing inequality. I strongly believe. Export can achieve that for Africa. Export can achieve that for Africa. Now, because export can achieve that for Africa, the only way we can make that happen is to concentrate on manufactured goods. As long as Africa be continue to export commodities and import finished products, we basically will be exporting jobs and importing poverty. 
As long as we focus on commodity, because we have no commodity for over 50, 60 years, and the whole of Africa, with 1.2 billion people, is contributing 2.5% of trade in the world. 2.5% of trade in the world. 2.5% of trade in the world. UK, with 60, 70 million people, is contributing over 400 billion in export. Nigeria is doing 60 billion dollars in export. The EU, with population of about 500 million people, is contributing over 30 percent, consistently at least 30 percent of world trade. The world trade last year was 18.89 trillion dollars. So, and if you go and check what these people are exporting, is manufactured goods. So I'm basically saying we must focus on manufactured goods. If you are going to do manufactured goods or at least value-added agro products, we are going to do that. All of us don't have to manufacture. We don't even have the money to do it anyway. But you can go to all these companies in Nigeria, in Ghana, in South Africa, wherever it is you are listening from, to me. Go there, partner with them, be a distributor in one of the African countries. Someone is asking a question. How are you a distributor but not a manufacturer? Do you package and distribute? Brilliant question, Mr. Kennedy. There are two ways you can do it. I don't even package. I sell the same brand. The manufacturer produced for me in his own brand. So I'm just a distributor in the UK for him, for her rather. So she produced, I place orders she produced, and I distribute. So I don't necessarily have to be a manufacturer. So he does what is often called contract manufacturing. So you can do that if you wanted to do it in your brand. Or you just sign an agreement to give you a distributorship right to a particular place and you sell their brands there. But you have owned that market and you grow it and you have an agreement to that effect. Mr. Kennedy, I hope I've been able to answer your question. Now, if you want to sell insulated wires, that's the regular cable that we use for our houses. If you want to sell that in Africa, you have to compete with Morocco. You have to compete with Morocco. You have to compete with Tunisia. You have to compete with Egypt. You have to compete with South Africa. And you have to compete with Algeria. These are the people you must compete with. These are the people you must compete with. And you notice the trend also is growing because we have a very huge housing deficit in Africa. We have a very huge housing deficit in Africa. Because we have a very huge housing deficit in Africa, we need to keep building and we need a lot of wires. It's been said that we need $1.4 trillion to be able to plug the, the, to be able to fix the housing deficit in Africa. Nigeria alone needs 22 million houses, housing units. 22 million. <laughs> 22 million. So all those houses we need, cable. So, you know, the reason why a lot of foreign companies are going to come and set up in Africa is because this is where the market is. You know, we have the market, but we don't see the market. We, because of the challenges in Africa, a lot of people are leaving Africa. But the way we are living Africa is the way foreigners are coming into Africa to come and set up businesses in Africa because this is where the market is. So because of the growing population, because of the housing deficit, we need to build more buildings, more houses, and those houses, we need cables. And hence the need for increasing number. So you can see the trend line of cable imports. You can see the trend line is growing in Africa. Why? Because, because the population is growing and the housing deficit is very, very, very huge. The housing deficit is very, very, very huge. Let's move on to gold. This is minerals. This is minerals. Gold. You know, I heard that Warren Buffett has sold most of his bank stock and a lot of stock for airlines. 
Do you know what he's buying? What in Bobbitt is buying gold. <laughs> what in is one of the richest man in the world. The man is buying gold. The man is buying gold. <laughs> the man is buying gold. The man is buying gold. The, the billionaires are buying gold to store value for their money. They are buying gold to store value for their money. So that the value of their money does not erode. So that the value of their money does not erode. To store value for their money. Because of the constancy of the price of gold or the stability of the price of gold. But in Africa, Nigeria, by the way, have a lot of gold. Ghana have a lot of gold. South Africa have a lot of gold. Burkina Faso have a lot of gold. Who are the major buyer of gold? South Africa is buying. South Africa is selling. I'm suspecting South Africa is buying raw and selling refined. And South Africa is buying raw and selling refined. And selling refined. That's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for those that are in the mineral sector. This is a huge opportunity. For those in the mineral sector, this is a very, very huge opportunity. So if you want to sell, who are we looking at? South Africa is a major market to sell your gold. Uganda is another market. Egypt is another market. Kenya is another market. Ethiopia is another market where you can sell gold. Pesticide. Now, another product you can distribute. There are a lot of producers of pesticide. In Nigeria. Nigeria is poor pesticide, actually. And Nigeria import pesticide also. I know pesticide, there are many variants. But the common one you will know is the one for malaria, mosquito. The one for mosquito, those spray, the one we call fleet. Different brand in Nigeria and different brand in Africa. Because we have, we have a lot of mosquito in Africa. <laughs> we have a lot of mosquito in Africa. It's so interesting that the market size for pesticide is over 2 billion. Amazing. Over 2 billion. Someone is saying, explain what you mean by contra distributorship. You mean, you mentioned that that part of the contract with the manufacturer is that you will agree to grow their product in a region, especially if you are exporting on the manufacturer's brand. Does this growing means they will give your volume? Yes, you agree on the volume target periodically. Exactly, Mr. Kennedy. You agree on the volume target. If they are going to leave it with you, so, for example, you can say, okay, in the next one year, we are expected that we will be able to sell maybe about $100,000 worth of our product in this market this year. And they expect to grow it maybe by 10% or 20% or 30% every year. So, if at the end of the contract, you're not able to meet up, if they find someone else that can deliver, they might give the contract to those people. So, that's why you also are very conservative in your estimation. So that at the end of the day, as the market is expanding, then you can be increasing your target. But what you said is exactly what I mean when I said contract, um, having a contract to be a distributor of those products. I'm only just giving us idea, you know, because when people think of export, people think of only commodities. They'll be thinking of uh, cashew nuts, ginger, gum arabic, uh, 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 cocoa. The people don't think of manufactured goods. And there are so much manufactured goods in Nigeria. So many manufactured goods in Nigeria and in other parts of Africa. As bad as we think Nigeria is, I must tell you that Nigeria is number 14 or 15 in the 
he in the competitiveness index and number five or four in West Africa. So Nigeria is not so bad as we think. I'm not saying government is doing enough. I think government can do much more. I'm only saying in spite of the current challenges in Nigeria, sincerely, we are still doing a lot better than a lot of African countries. And the implication of that for me is that you can partner with a lot of manufacturers to produce. And you know, when we do this for manufacturers, manufacturers can reduce their cost of production because the volume will grow and they can leverage on the economy of scale. They can begin to use their IDU capacity or their excess capacity to produce more and produce at a cheaper rate. And then you can distribute those products for them right within the African continent right within the African continent. So let's go back to pesticide. I was talking about pesticide. The fact that there's a huge market for pesticide. So check out the pesticide you have in your country and ask yourself, which of these will I want to distribute? So from what I'm saying, you can see that you can come up with a fantastic business plan to be able to distribute a particular finished product in an African market. In an African market. And God so good, Nexim is working on a vessel that can enable us to ship by sea to a number of African countries so that the cost of moving by sea become, moving the good become cheaper instead of moving by road, which is very expensive right now. So with all these things coming up, and Nigeria is planning to build a rail to Nigel, and this is in, in fortress of the AFCFTA. A number of African countries are trying to connect themselves with rail to be able to facilitate shipment of goods. You know, this afternoon, I, I was talking to someone, I was passing through, um, what was the name? Um, the the Ijibo, and I was talking to someone about the rail, and I saw a rail, I saw a train that is carrying load. You know, it, it's not a common thing you see in Nigeria. When I saw it, I was so excited. I, wow! You know, so there are rail moving stuff, goods in Nigeria right now. Moving stuff, not just human beings. There are three lanes of that rail now traversing down to, 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 to our papa. You know, so what's interesting to that about, I mean, for me, is that the government might not be doing enough, like I said, but it's also good to comment some little things you see they are doing. For me, the real, because one of the reasons why Nigeria cannot export some item from Nigeria today is that cost of moving goods is so high, but the rail system will drop it, the rail system will reduce queue, the rail system will make the road better, the road will not have to carry so much load with truck, so the road lasts longer. The, the truck will not have to queue up in a papa. The truck can drop it at any terminal outside Lagos to bring it into Lagos, and the rail can deliver to Lagos. No traffic, no delay. I mean, it's so amazing. So those are the things we should be seeing in Africa, and I expect to see more, because if trade is going to traverse Africa, one of the things we must do in Africa is to build rail. There are about 15 or 16 landlocked countries in Africa. Those countries, we can reach them through sea. We can only reach them by air or by road, or by rail. But the cheapest is rail. <laughs> Out of the three, the cheapest is rail. The one with less issue and has to do with custom is rail. Rail and air. Road is too much issue, too much headache, costing different borders. But rail, rail will just go straight. <laughs> just go straight and go to destination. So rail is coming up. I mean, I must give it to the Buhari government for the rail, sincerely. I don't know when they started the plan, but you know, see the rail I'm seeing? I think it's what we need to be able to grow a trade. And we need to grow trade. Like I said, if I'm going to reduce hunger, reduce poverty, reduce inequality, SDG, sustainable development, go one, nine, and ten. Trade for me is, the, is a powerhouse to achieve those sustainable development goals in Nigeria. So let's look at um, if you want to distribute the product, who are your competitors? You are going to compete with South Africa, you are going to compete with Cote d'Ivoire, you are going to compete with Kenya. You're going to compete with Egypt. You're going to compete with Mauritius. And you're going to ship to South Africa, the market you're looking at, South Africa, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Egypt. South Africa, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Egypt. Another very interesting product, furnitures, furnitures, furnitures. You know, I'm, 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 I'm glad for those of us that are joining this. I'm, if, if there's one thing I, I think I will be able to achieve is to make... Someone said, I have a question. What about paint and coatings? Olaide, Olanihu, can you please do me a favor? Drop a, a chat. I will send you... Olaide, Olanihu, I'm sending you a private chat now with a number. 
drop a chat for that number. I will add it to the list of products we are going to be looking at. So before we finish this program in, in the month of October, we should finish this series in the month of October and start another series on EFCFT on market. Before we get into that, please, I just drop a number for you. Chat that number with the product you just mentioned. And I'm going to add it to my list so that it will be part of the list. So if you are listening to me and there are products you feel you want us to consider, I, I will check out this product to see what is the potential in the African market. Paint and coatings. So please, Olaide, please chat me back. Chat that number and I will, I will ensure we add it. So maybe sometimes in, in, uh, in uh, October, you'll be able to, we'll be dealing with that. Because we're taking about five, six, about six, seven products every week. And we have over 70, 80, over, over 70 products to deal with. Okay, so um, I was talking about, the comp uh, about this product, furniture. You know, I said, if there's one thing I think uh, we will be achieving with this program also is the fact that we are seeing that there's so much product that we can export outside commodities, outside our Greek. And before now, you can ship some of this product to other uh, um, what is it? other countries in Europe and America and Asia because they are producing it better. They are better. They are producing it better. They have better. Uh, what do you call it now? They have better uh, technology. They have better price. But now we are shipping to Africa. And my research shows that in my research, I discovered that majority of Nigerian export to Africa is manufactured goods. We don't do a lot of agri commodity to Africa. Our major export to Africa is manufactured goods. So can you imagine that furniture from chairs to tables? And Nigeria have a lot of wood. We are only exporting raw wood. Can you imagine we are exporting raw wood? Instead of adding value, we are destroying our environment. Furniture made from metals. Furniture made from uh, raffia, uh, raffia palm. Furniture made from bamboo. Furniture made from, uh, um, um, uh, what was the name of this? Um, cane, cane shears. Those cane shears, the one from cane. Raffia made from cane. Raffia made from bamboo. Raffia made from wood. Raffia made from metal. Raffia made, I mean, um, furniture made from wood. Furniture made from metal. Furniture made from from raffia, furniture made from bamboo. There's so many kind of furnitures that we can export. And Nigerians are producing it. Ghanaians are producing it. South Africans are producing it. So we have opportunity now to ship this thing in Africa. So I'm saying again, you don't need to be a furniture maker. If you have the fund, partner with manufacturers. Instead of them queuing up and begging bank to get money from bank, why can't you make the money available to them? Let them have the money. Get a staff to work with them. So as they produce, you get your product from them. So you can supply this product. I'm aware of a company in Nigeria owned by Asians producing furniture and exporting to Europe. You heard me right. Exporting to Europe. I think Spain or Italy. You heard me right. A, an Asian company, I think India or Lebanese company in Nigeria, producing furniture in Nigeria. They don't sell it in Africa, in Nigeria market. They don't sell it in Nigeria market. They sell in Europe. And you're telling me we can't export furniture to Europe when we have the wood here? We can. The only thing is that when people think of export, the only thing they think of is <laughs> cocoa, <laughs> coffee, cashew, sesame, ginger. We don't think of value-added goods. Do all those... All Nigerian agro commodity put together, the market size is no more than $20 billion. All Nigerian agro commodity that Nigerian put together, the total market size in the world for all Nigerian agro commodity export is not up to $20 billion. So don't think only of agro. Think beyond agro. Agro plus value added, manufacture good. Imagine that furniture like beddings, furniture like mattress, Furniture like support for mattress, furniture like chairs, kitchen chairs are exported and imported into Africa at the rate of $6.21 billion. Amazing. How can you imagine $6.21 billion? Who are those bringing it in? Can you see Nigeria there? See Nigeria there? <laughs> see Nigeria there? South Africa, Egypt, Morocco. Algeria, Nigeria, Angola, Kenya, Ghana, Libya. These are the major, major importer. 
I, I'm amazed. Six billion dollars? That's a lot of money for furniture. So huge market there, ladies and gentlemen. Huge market there. 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 <laughs> huge market. If you are thinking of selling it, these are the market. So, and you can see the trend line is growing. We need more furniture. We need more furniture. As you build houses, we need more furniture. As our population grows, we need more furniture. So the trend line is growing. So that's, a, that's an outlook to show you that look, the demand for furniture is increasing in Africa. So we, who are the competing competitors? Egypt is a competitor. Tanzania is a competitor. South Africa is a competitor. Morocco is a competitor. Tunisia is a competitor. You know what? If you want to play in this market, check out what your competitors are doing. But remember I said, you don't need to be the manufacturer let someone produce for you. When someone has produced for you, you take the distributorship right in different markets. So there are, for furniture now, I think there are a lot of research to be done for furniture. You need to research deeper into countries of your choice and then ask yourself, in what form, which of the furniture, because furniture is large, which of the furniture do they buy in South Africa? Which of the furniture do they buy in Morocco? Which one do they buy more in Morocco? Which one do they buy more in Algeria or in Libya? You need to be sure of which of them do they buy more and let that guide your decision. You need to be sure which of them do they buy more and let that guide your decision so that you'll be able to know which of the product really, which of the, is it chair? And in what form should the chair be? Is it metal? Is it aluminum? Is it leather? Is it wood? Is it the raffia? Is it the cane? Is it the bamboo? Which of them? This is the research you have to do. And immediately you find out, then you can easily, easily, easily talk to the manufacturer to now begin to engage. When we are going to discuss market, like I said, maybe sometimes in November, we're going to discuss market. And when we start talking about market, we're going to be looking at different countries and then we'll discuss different export market entry options and that we should be considering to be able to enter into the export market. All right. Let's move on to another product. And the next product we are looking at is poultry meat. Interesting. Look, 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 look. Poultry meat simply means chicken. Chicken. Ah. <laughs> Africa is importing $2.1 billion of chicken. It, 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 it is, oh my God. I'm, I'm alarmed. $2.1 billion of chicken. $2.1 billion of chicken. I, I can't phantom this. I am, I'm, 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 I'm 2.1. We can do chicken now. We can do chicken now. You know, when you see frozen chicken coming into Nigeria, and you begin to ask yourself, is it that we can't produce enough? What is exactly 2.1 billion? Anyway, those of us that are in a Greek, good news for you. Good news for you. You remember this has to be frozen chicken. Good news for you. Good news for you. 2.1 billion dollar market. And South Africa is the major importer of chicken. They are the ones that eat chicken the most in Africa. A quarter of imported chicken in Africa is imported by South Africa. A quarter of imported chicken in Africa is imported by South Africa. South Africa is a lot of chicken. <laughs> Over $500 million import of chicken. Amazing. Angola, another market for chicken. Ghana, another market for chicken. Libya, another market for chicken. Uh, Benin Republic, another market for chicken. Congo, both DRC and Republic of Congo, another market for chicken. Egypt, another market for chicken. Remember that, you know, there is not, not just poultry meat, there is pig meat, there is pig meat, there is goat meat, there is cow meat. All of them are imported in Africa. Goat meat, cow meat, pig meat, apart from poultry meat. Apart from poultry meat. So the question you should be asking yourself is, so why can't you consider one of these? 
Why? Why can't you import? I know, I know in Nigeria we are not we do, we can't we, we eat a lot of chicken, so we can't even feed that. We we don't have enough. I know, I know. But that, the fact that we don't have enough tells you that there's an opportunity there. There's an opportunity there. There is an opportunity there. Huge opportunity actually. I, I, I didn't know the opportunity in this space is so huge like this. Huge opportunity. Who are the people you should be competing with? And you can see the trend line growing. The trend line is growing. The trend line must grow. Someone is asking a question. I think that many of these products are imported because local production cannot compete with the prices from foreign imports. Now, Mr. Dare Talabi, you are right. With AFCFTA, we will be able to compete because the duty on our product will be removed, but the duty on those people we are buying from will remain. So if a country put 30% duty on, 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 um, on frozen chicken, and because I'm not going to pay that 30%, you know what? I have a market. That's the beauty of the free trade agreement in, in Africa, African continental free trade agreement that we're discussing. That's the reason why the opportunity is in Africa. That's the reason why the opportunity is in Africa. That's the reason why. And you can see the trend line. Can you see the trend going? The trend is going up. I've told you, I will be shocked if I see the trend line of import of any food item going down. I'll be shocked. And the only explanation for that will be that maybe we are producing that item. That's the only explanation. Besides that, it will keep going up. Why? Of course, the reason is obvious. <laughs> the reason is obvious. Why is the reason obvious? Our population is growing. Our population is growing. We are, we are the, way, the rate of, pro, of reproduction. <laughs> the rate of reproduction in Africa is, is great. You know, I was, I was reading. I was, okay, there was time I was going through the market in Africa, and I discovered that um, I think Niger Republic is the most fertile. An average woman has five children. Five. <laughs> so that's a big challenge. Very big challenge. Because many cannot cater for those children. Hence, the, the increase in demand for food. Who are the competing African countries? South Africa is a major competitor. It's interesting that the volume of export of, 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 of chicken is very small, 